was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's always a blessing to come to the house of the Lord. It's always a blessing to come and worship God. But it's also a blessing to come and receive from the Lord. And I'm going to receive my portion today. Have you come expecting to receive from God? Amen. Amen. We've started talking about faith about three weeks, two to three weeks ago. And I want us to continue along those lines. And I want to show you from scriptures what God says and that should be final in our lives. Amen. Last week I indicated to you that when God created, if you look at Genesis chapter 1, you will hear after he created everything. Day 1, he reviewed and said everything is good. Day 2, reviewed everything is good. And when he finished everything, everything was good. Amen. Then I asked you a question. I said, is everything good and perfect in the world we're living in now? And we all said, not now. Which means something went wrong along the way. And we said it was because the devil was thrown from heaven. He used to be called Lucifer. He was the angel of praise. And then when he rebelled with the demons that he were with him, they were thrown down to the earth. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has been thrown down to you. But what I like is that God has given us as his children authority over the works of the enemy. And you are here to be trained. The book of Psalms, we won't read it, Psalms 18.34 says, He trains my hands for battle. Amen. Amen. And you are here for training. Tell your neighbor, I'm here for training. Amen. Because there is a devil who comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And you can only manage if you have the power of God in your life. Can we go to 1 John chapter 5, 4 and 5 NLT, Mr. MJ? Let's start there. This is our text scripture. Just to show you that through your faith, you can overcome this world. You can live in victory. 1 John chapter 5, 4 and 5, Mr. MJ, NLT. For every child of God defeats this evil world. Okay, do I have children of God here? If you are a child of God, the Bible says you defeat this evil world. Mm -hmm. And we achieve this victory through our faith. So how do we defeat this world? Through our faith. Through our faith. That's why you need to understand what is faith and how to exercise your faith. The other time I was telling you, you need to use your faith like a mechanic uses a tool. Do you know that if you want to take out a wheel to remove a, a tire from the car without a wheel spanner it's almost an impossible task isn't it you can do everything you can then you can say it's impossible but when you've got the right tool is it impossible it's very easy amen, amen. so similarly when you have faith which is like a tool for you to receive from God, it becomes easier because now you know how to receive from God. So it says we achieve this victory through our faith. Verse 5. And who can win this battle against the world? Mm. Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So we've got an advantage. As children of God, you've got an advantage because you can defeat this world. And it says it's only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, the reason why our world is in such a turmoil, it's in such a turmoil and people are confused, is because they are trying to solve issues on their own. A human being on your own, you are no match for the devil. He's experienced. Okay? So you can only defeat him if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So if you are a child of God, you know how to overcome. Go with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9 in the King James Version. I just want to show you that when the devil is thrown down here, he wants to cause chaos. He wants to cause division in your family. He will even make you fight with your close relatives. Okay? Sometimes you even fight with friends. 
At that time, I was even saying the gender-based violence that we see. Somebody who once said they love this person a lot. You find they are killing each other. Which means there is another force. There is the devil that has come now into the picture. Okay? You know, even in the beginning, after Eve was given to Adam, you remember the nice words that Adam said? This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she's taken out of a man. You see, he was reciting and you can see the rhyme, isn't it? Bone of my bones. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Flesh of my flesh. So imagine such an excitement. That's when God is in the sea. But a chapter later, after Eve was deceived, and they ate of the forbidden fruit, how did uh, Adam view Eve? Was he bone of my bones? Flesh of my flesh. No. Is this woman whom you gave me? That's the problem. You see, the blame game started. Instead of him admitting, he says, the problem is you and the woman. Because he says, is this woman you gave me? So the two of you sorted it out. It's not me. And then God went to the woman. Why did you do this? It's not me. The snake deceived me. Nobody taking responsibility. Then they went to the snake. The snake didn't have any leg to stand on. <laughs> okay. As a pun and in reality. <laughs> so, so, so the devil couldn't say, I mean, you know the, day, the snake doesn't have a, a leg to stand on. So even then, it, did, it couldn't defend itself. Okay? But they were all penalized. God didn't say because he's the snake, then you are free. You know each one of them was given their own sentence. So now go with me to this first Peter chapter 5 verse 8 and 9 in the King James Version. Because I want to show you that this devil is still here. He is roaming around. He is looking for praise. For somebody to devour. Okay? It better not be you. You remember last week we said minangek. Minangek. Not with me. Now look. Be sober. Be vigilant. Yes. So when it says be vigilant, watch out. Mm. Why? Because your adversary, the mm. devil, as a roaring lion. Okay. We have an adversary and his name is? The devil. So the enemy is not your wife. The enemy is not your uncle. The enemy is not your husband. The enemy is not your mom. Our adversary is the devil. the devil. He may use the people close to you. But he is the one who is your enemy. It says he is roaring as a lion. But he's not a lion. You remember when we were worshipping here we said Lion of Judah. There is only one lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah. And in the book of Revelation. The, 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 John says. There were seals that couldn't be opened. He says. And I wept because there was nobody worthy. To open the seals. And then he said. I was told. Don't worry. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Amen. And is worthy to open the seals. Amen. 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 So whichever situation that you are facing. The lion of the tribe of Judah is on your side. Jesus is on my side. I've got the Jesus factor like uh, Mr. Netanyahu was saying. You see, that's the difference. As children of God, we live in this world like anybody else. We face challenges like anybody else. But you've got the Jesus factor on your side. Amen. So it says, your adversary the devil is a roaring lion. Walketh about, mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour. Ish. Hey. Let's say, ish. Hey. It better not be you. Mm. Tell your neighbor, it better not be you. <laughs> it better not be you. 
You see, our adversary is roaming around. We heard that he was thrown to the earth and is angry. You remember in Revelation chapter 12. So it says, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is roaming around seeking him whom he may devour. So what should we do? Because now maybe we are in trouble. Mm. Uh -huh. Whom resist steadfast, steadfast in the faith. Okay. How do we deal with him? We resist him. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Mm. So you stand your ground when the enemy comes you declare what God has said. Even when you feel like you're weak and things are not working out, things seem to be falling apart, don't be moved by what you see. Use your faith to change that situation to align with what God has said. The good thing is that the word of God doesn't change. Do you know that our situations change? Today you may be like this and tomorrow is the other way, but the word of God remains forever. So rather stick with the word that doesn't change. So it says, you must resist the devil steadfast in your faith. So in other words, we have what it takes to overcome the enemy. Tell your neighbor, I have what it takes to resist the devil. I am more than a conqueror. The devil is under my feet. Amen. I've got the power of God in me. Amen. I've got the power of God in me. Even when you think you feel you don't feel like it, believe it. And keep on speaking it. Keep on speaking it. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 19. Chapter 10, verse 19, in the Passion. Luke 10, 19. I wanted to I want to show you that. We overcome the enemy. It says those who believe in Jesus, they overcome this evil world, they overcome the devil. All your troubles come from the enemy. Okay? He is the source of troubles. He's a troublemaker. Okay? He may use people around you. Amen. So in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, the Passion, Mr. MJ, now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority to trample over his kingdom. Hey, can you repeat that? People, listen to what Jesus says about us as children of God and the enemy who is the devil, who is trying to confuse this world, who is bringing all the issues that you are concerned about, sicknesses, calamities, dangers, accidents, all the things that he may want to hurt us with. Mm. There are so many things he wants to hurt us with. But now, are we in despair? Mm. Hasn't God given us what it takes to overcome the enemy? Mm. So repeat that. Now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority to temple over his kingdom. So can we all say, I have... I have the authority of Jesus, the authority of Jesus to trample to trample over the kingdom of the devil. Over the kingdom of the devil. Do that even in your family. Amen. Do that wherever you are. So that wherever you go, may the glory of God move with you. Amen. May things start changing because you are there. May you start not talking like people of the world who always talk defeat. You know that when you greet people, how are you? Hey, life is tough, man. Life is tough, my brother. But you're supposed to do something about it. Amen? Because you defeat this evil world. So continue. You will trample upon every demon before you. Yeah. And overcome every power Satan hey. possesses. Hey. You will trample upon every demon before you. We say in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I have a victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I have a victory for when I 
I call in the name of Jesus. Nothing can stand before me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I have a victory. Even when it's coming before you, you need to say nothing can stand before me. Amen. Amen. God is on my side. Amen. God said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. No one will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Amen. The enemy may bring what he wants to bring, but let's keep our faith. So repeat that. You will trample. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Ish. We are set for life. Amen. 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 Even though the devil is still there, we have been given the authority over him. And all the things that he has been hurting you with, the Bible says he will not be able to harm you. Okay? So it means you stand your ground and say, if something comes and it harms me, it's not aligned to the word of God. Amen? Because according to this, absolutely nothing will be able to harm me as I walk in the authority. So it means if something comes and it hurts you, you need to bring that to order because it's not, it's not supposed to be like that. According to the word of God, nothing can stand before me. Nothing can harm me because God is on my side. Amen. Amen. So that's why you come here for training. We get trained. Amen. So that the enemy will be able to put him under our feet. You use your faith to get your victory. So as I was thinking about this faith thing, as you go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. New King James Version, Mr. MJ. As I was thinking about this, I thought, okay. Faith, I overcome the enemy and the victory is through my faith. Yes, I can use faith to overcome the enemy. But what about when I need things from God? I also use my faith. And what I've actually picked up is that God already wants things to go well with me. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, he has given me everything that pertains to life and to godliness. So it means according to God, he has already provided for me everything I need. It's only the enemy who may try to block my blessing. Okay? You remember we told you the story in the book of Daniel. When Daniel prayed. You remember the story? He prayed. And then for 21 days, his answer did not come. On day 21, the angel came to him and said, Daniel, beloved, the very first day that you prayed, your, your prayer was heard and I was sent with your answer. Which means some of you, your prayer is already answered. Okay? But then there are forces of darkness that try to stop your answer. So he says, for when I came, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me all these 21 days until Michael the archangel. You remember we told you about Michael the archangel of war. He says until Michael the archangel came and he contended with and then I got my breakthrough. Now I'm here to bring you the answer. Which to me says God already wants things to go well with me. Amen. And I already have answers to my prayers. But there is the enemy who doesn't like things to go well with me. There is the enemy who wants me to always be crying and always hurt. Okay? And he will do all he can to, 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 to disturb my miracle. Okay? So it means I need to know how to stand my ground. 1 Timothy 6.12, New King James Version. Fight the good fight of faith. Ish. I like this. So, we have to fight, but you don't fight people. 
Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Our struggle is against the forces of darkness. Okay? You remember in, in, in Ephesians 6 it says, Our fight is not against flesh and blood. We fight against spiritual wicked forces in the heavenly places. So even those of you who are intercessors, as you are interceding, as you are praying, you are destroying things in the heavenly realm. And then breakthroughs come in the natural. So even when you pray, sometimes you pray and you feel you still have the burden to pray and you don't feel a breakthrough yet. Don't stop until you feel in your spirit that I've got my breakthrough. Even before I can see it with my eyes, but I know it's settled now. Amen. You travail in prayers. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which we also call, called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen. So it says fight the good fight of faith. I want to touch one point of why it's a good fight. How does it feel to fight a fight when you have already won it? It feels good, isn't it? Yeah. The Bible already says you are an overcomer. You are much more than a conqueror. Now you are asked to fight. You're fighting a winning battle. Amen. Because you are a winner. Remember the other time I gave you an example. I said it's almost like. If you are watching a match. That you already saw before. And you know who was the winner. Even if another team scores first you still know who's the winner so you relax so it doesn't matter where you are now the pressure that you are undergoing from the devil you are a winner and he is the loser amen i gave you an example also of boxing those of you who understand boxing i used to like boxing when i was growing up i like watching it not playing it Amen. It's more it's, it's more nicer to watch boxing, not to <laughs> not to get in the ring yourself. So I picked up that actually what counts in boxing is not how you start or how in the middle how things go. It's at the end who is down. And when you are down, if you are down in boxing and you stand up, you are not out. That's why we don't call it knock down. We call it knock out. <laughs> so if you are knocked down, tell your neighbor, I'm not out. I may be down. But I'm not out. And the good thing with our God, you see, this is what is unfair to the devil. Think of that boxing match. And it's going between you and the devil and that and the referee is your father. Then let's say the devil gives you an uppercut and sometimes you get that uppercut, isn't it? <laughs> you miscalculated. And now you get that uppercut and you are down. And your father knows you are a winner. And he's the one who's doing the counting. How do you think he will be counting? He will go, one! Allowing you to take some breath. Two. Ish. And the devil thinks this is two. This, this, if, it's, if it were me, it would have been one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> it's unfair to the devil and it's fair to us. Amen. How many of you know that favor is unfair when it's not done to you? But when it's only it's for you, it's, it's fair. <laughs> Amen. It's only unfair when it's done to others. Amen. So it means now, if he comes and say, eight, and I stand up, and I go and fight and win, I'm a winner, isn't it? Amen. They don't say when they pronounce the results, and here, the results of this uh, whatever fight, and so and so, who fell in round five, and fell in round seven. But ultimately won. No. 
They just say, and still. Even if you're... <laughs> haven't you seen the boxers? You would find like this. So don't worry. Even if you like this, but you are the champion. Amen. Amen. Actually, you know what this means? It only means I was engaged in a warfare. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with whether I'm a champion or not. So some of you may be bruised a bit. That's just a sign that you were fighting. But you are more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. So I'm saying to you, it means even when you feel things are tough and you feel like you are down, you are not out. Amen. So, and when you win, they just say, and still. Amen. 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 And still. So, I'm talking also from experience. It's not that I, as your pastor, don't get attacked. But I always know how to win. So, at the end, we proclaim the victory. Amen. And the other time I told some of you, some of the tests you are going through, they look like very big tests. But it's so that you may have a big test in money. You remember the other time I told you, you cannot write the word testimony without writing the word test. So it means you first get a test, then you can get a testimony. The greater the test, the greater the testimony. Amen. Amen. So it means whatever you're going through, if you think, Pastor, this is just too much for me. This is just too much for me. It means we are heading for a too much great testimony. Amen. 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 Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Okay, now. With faith, let's go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. You can't talk faith and not talk Hebrews 11.1. 1. Amplified classic. Because I want to just define for you faith. So that you can understand it. I think I've defined it even the week when we started this. But as I'm connecting all this together, I want you to understand the faith principle. So read that for us, Amplified Classic, Mr. MJ, Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the assurance, mm. the confirmation, mm. the title deed yes. of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see mm -hmm. and the conviction of their reality. Mm. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. I like that last part. It says, faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. It means when you are walking in faith, you will see things that other people don't see. Okay? When you are walking in faith, you walk in the supernatural. Mr. Nathanian, when he was encouraging us here about giving, he was talking about how when you use these principles in the spiritual, so you do something, you give your gift and all that, and God is working behind the scene. His testimony is very much of a blessing testimony. Amen. So now, if I can partner with God and then I get things like that, why can't I keep on giving? Amen. Because then I know if I partner with God, if I exercise my faith, I see things the way God sees them. And people of the world may say, no, this is not there. This is like that. But I know. Okay, let me ask you a question. The other time I told you, you hear my voice, but you can't see it, isn't it? So if you were deaf, you would have said, oh, the pastor is not speaking. Isn't it? <laughs> we don't hear anything. If you don't hear anything, does it mean I'm not speaking? It's you who can, who can receive it. So it means, even with faith, sometimes you find that we grasp something by faith, which our senses, this verse here says, what is not yet revealed to the senses. Let me make it simple. Sometimes I like making illustrations, but, but I don't have to blindfold any of you. I wanted to call one of you and blindfold you. Okay? And blindfold you. And ask you, are there people here in the in church? What were you going to say? Yes. And I say, do you see them? <laughs> but 
But you told me if you can't see it, it's not there. So it means even things that you cannot see, it doesn't mean they are not there. You, it's, your eyes are just not open to see it. You remember when the servant of God, Elisha, one time the enemies were coming against him. The soldiers were coming to capture them. And he was with his servant. They were just two. In the morning when he woke up, the servant said, Behold our enemies, they are here. There are too many and they are coming to capture us. And we are in trouble. What did the man, the, the man of God say? The man of God said, There are more who are with us than they are with them. And then we count one, two. With our eyes. Then the man of God did not pray. Lord, send your angels. What did he say? Lord, open his eyes. The problem is not the angels. The problem is his eyes. He cannot see that. The, and the Bible says, and when the Lord opened his eyes, he saw chariots of fire all around them. They saw how much surrounded we are. You just don't know how well surrounded you are. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm well surrounded. The angel of the Lord encamps around me who fears the Lord. And he delivers me. Amen. So I'm well covered. So that's why I say, actually where I grew up. I grew up in rural area. Sometimes that's why some of the examples I give are from rural area. We used to hear that there are wizards and witches. And I think they are there. They are there because the Bible also talks about them. Okay? They will tell you even if your door is locked, you can come in. And sometimes we would be sleeping, but, but guys, and we would be hearing around the house, and, and then you are afraid, and we just didn't know what to do. Okay? Until I found Jesus. Until I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I remember this specific testimony. I will give you just like Mr. Netanyahu gave you his. <laughs> I used to be very much afraid of, you know the thing called Ndazi. In our language, Ndazi. In Venda. And I think in English they call it lightning. <laughs> they think it's a lightning. No, they, they are some which are a lightning, but there are some. <laughs> which is because of people. Okay? Now, I used to be very much afraid of that thing because I thought, if it's raining, where should you be? You can't be outside the house. You must go in. And those times, we used to live in such houses. And even if it's raining, there will be fire. <laughs> so, I was very much afraid of that thing and I just didn't know what to do. But after I accepted Jesus, I remember I told my mother this way, you know, we used to plow and that. So I just said to her, Mommy, do you know that now I'm not afraid of Ndazi? I was talking it out loud. Said, Don't. Hey! You must keep quiet. Pe people will show you money. I said, no, Mommy. I know they can't do me anything now. I found something. I found Jesus. Amen. Because now I knew that I'm well covered. Okay. I knew that Jesus was on my side. And my mother didn't feel it was the right move to do that. But I said it. And now you know what's surprising. Even if I go to rural areas now, those go -go 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 -go, they are no more there. Because I was saying, let them try this time. Yes. This time I know how to fight. Yes. I know that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yes. The Russians run unto it and they are safe. Yes. So I was going to now, so now I look for opportunity and they don't come. <laughs> because I wanted to arrest some of those wizards, which is, because now I've got the power. Yes. Amen. Because I've now been given the authority. So when you are a child of God, you have this authority. So it is, says your faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So it means when I'm exercising faith, I'm not walking by my senses. Uh, 
Mr. Norki, does your car still have walk by faith or not by sight? Okay. So, he says, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, he says, we walk by faith, not by sight. So, it means my life is dictated to by what I believe, not by what I see. So, if my situation doesn't change, that's its problem. Because I know what I believe. And things have to ultimately align to what I believe. So it means I'm only moved by God's word. Not by my circumstances. Go with me to the book of Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17, New King James Version. <clears throat> moved by God's word. Romans 10, 17. So then, faith comes by hearing, mm. and hearing by the word of God. So now, do you see how faith comes? Faith doesn't come by having your situation looking better. <laughs> you know that some of you, we pray for you, or you pray yourself. And instead of you saying, I'm healed by the stripes of the Lord Jesus, just based on the word, Hey, I'm not feeling better, Pastor. Or, I'm feeling better, that's why I believe. Amen. Is that faith? <laughs> if, you, if you're believing because you feel better, ha, the devil will play games with you. Amen? Yeah, he will take away the thing that you were relying on to feel better. Now you feel it's getting worse. But has the word changed? The word doesn't change. So if my faith is based on the word of God, it means I am like Mount Zion. The Bible says the righteous are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. Amen. I am steadfast. I am resolute because my faith is based on the word. So let's look at it in Romans chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. We'll pick speed a bit because this one I'd already shared with you. But I'm connecting it because it's connecting very well to show you that our faith is not based <coughs> on circumstances. Our faith is based on God's word to change our circumstances. Amen. Romans 4, 16 to 21, King James Version, Mr. MJ. So, the other time I told you about that word faith, I looked it in the Greek. I told you I've got Greek and Hebrew Bible. Sometimes I check them just to see the original verse. Word. So I said that word faith was the word pistis, which means conviction or persuasion. So when you are fully convinced, when you are fully persuaded, it doesn't matter how other people are viewing it. You know. Amen. You know. Even when people try and mock you and say, do you think hallelujah will do this and this for you? You know. Don't worry if they mock your faith. It's because they can't see. And they want to wait for seeing first. So Romans chapter 4, 16 to 21, King James Version. Therefore, it is of faith. Yes, it is of faith. faith. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that it might be by grace. Uh -huh. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. So, it's faith and there is a promise here. Uh -huh. mm. Not to that only which is of the law, mm. but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Okay, let's look at Abraham's faith. Verse 17. As it is written, yeah. I have made thee a father of many nations. I want you to look at that. So, I told you the other time I said that word, word, when it says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, it said is the word rhema, which means the spoken word or the revealed word. Now here it says, as it is written. So I told you the written word is regarded as logos. Okay? So your faith can come from what is written. And you can overcome the enemy from what is written. And that's what Jesus did. He did not debate with the devil. He said, it is written. It is written, and he overcame the enemy. So it says, as it is written. So you can have your faith by what is written. What was written? I have made you a father of many nations. So if the word, if the word of God already says something about my body, that I'm healed, I believe that. Because it is written. Before him whom he believed, mm. 
even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Yes, God calls things that be not as though they were. And he calls things into being. That's what you do with your faith. With your faith, you call things that are not there to become. Okay? You call them into manifestation. When I call a health in my body, if sickness is trying to occupy my body, I say, devil, no. I receive my health. I walk in divine health. I call divine health in my body. Even when my body doesn't feel like it. Who against hope believed in hope mm. that he might become the father of many nations. Okay, who against hope believed in hope. So sometimes your situation would be hopeless. But what will give you hope? Because it's written. Yes. Mm. If you were to look on your situation, you would say it's hopeless. But you know something mm. beyond your situation. Continue. According to that which was spoken. Okay. According to that which was so we had according to that which was written. written. Mm. But it's also according to that which was spoken. What was spoken? So shall thy seed be. Okay. What was written? On top there. I have made thee a father of many nations. Okay. And now, what was spoken? So shall thy seed be. be. Uh -huh. mm. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Okay. I like that. Why I like it in the King James, this particular verse, is because other verses talked about he considered. He considered that. He considered his body. No. When you want to exercise your faith, don't consider your circumstances mm. because you will be discouraged. Mm. I told some of you, <laughs> if I'm attacked with sickness and I'm not feeling well in my body, even if my body is feeling hot, I don't take a thermometer and try and check. Because if I check, and see that is very high. It just threatens me more. So rather, I consider not this, and rather I go and look at the weight. Because the more I look at my circumstance, it won't change. You remember when the people rebelled, the children of Israel as they were moving, they rebelled, and then they were beaten by snakes. You remember the serpent story? They were beaten by serpents. And then, to save them, God said to Moses, make a snake, a serpent, and put it on a pole, and everyone who looks to this serpent, which was a type of Christ hanging on the cross, will leave. So it means when they were beaten, if they considered their situation and focused on it, they would die. But everybody who looked at the cross, lived. So it means similarly, even in your own situation, instead of spending time looking at your situation, spend time looking at the cross. Spend time looking at what is written. Spend time looking at your promises. So it says, continue. He considered not his own body now dead, mm. when he was about a hundred years old, mm. neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Yeah. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. So it means when he didn't consider his own body now dead, nor yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he was considering what? The promise of God. He says he staggered not at the promise of God. So in other words, instead of considering those things, he considered only what was written. Continue. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hmm. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. So it says he was fully persuaded. I told you the, term, the word faith is persuasion, persuaded, or conviction, convicted. Okay? Now it says he was fully persuaded. What? That what God had promised. He was able also to perform. So he was holding on to the promise. Not on what he could see. Okay? So it means even in your faith, hold on to the promise. Whatever God has promised, hold on to that promise. 
Keep on holding to it even when your situation is getting worse on the outside. I told you that the problem with depending on things getting better and then your faith gets boosted. The devil will play games with you and you will be played. Okay? And then, because you think, because now it's getting better. Now, yeah, hey, now, now I've got faith because it's getting better. No. Your faith should be based on what God has said, not on what you see. Can I give you an example? Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 17 and 18, we'll do it in the ERV, easy to read version. I want to show you something because I checked this and I saw it in easy to read and I liked it. Because it doesn't talk about God testing Abraham, it talks about God testing Abraham's faith. There's a difference between testing somebody and testing their faith. Okay? I will show you where the trick is. So, it's Hebrews 11, 17 and 18 ERV. God tested Abraham's faith. Oh. Why did God test? Abraham's faith. Okay. Now, you saw where we read in, 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 in Romans chapter 4. It talks about, he was told, you will be a father of many nations so shall thy seed be, all those things. And at that time, he didn't have a single child. You remember that? So, in the natural, he did not have anything. But his name was changed to Abraham, which means the father of multitudes. So, some of you, you need to start changing your names to speak your faith. Amen? Amen. So, even when people, how do you think people who were next to Abraham were saying? Because he used to be called Abraham. And after that, God changed his name. He said, from now on, you will be called Abraham, father of multitudes. Imagine he was walking around and people were saying, hey, father of multitudes. Maybe some, maybe the wife were calling him, father of multitudes. The neighbor was saying, hi. <laughs> Things are getting worse now. <laughs> they realize they can't get a child. Now they are starting to call themselves as if they have a child. Hey, father of multitude. Father of many children. And the neighbors were saying, is, is this called faith? You have to be realistic. Let them keep on mocking you. They will see. As they come back later, they will see there is an Isaac. Now Isaac was born out of promise, you know that. Now, how do you think, okay, before Isaac was born, and Abraham and Sarah, they were trusting God for a child. Actually, they were not trusting God for a child, for children, because they were called, they were going to have multitude of children. And it says, your children will be like the sand of the, in the sea. They will be like stars in the heavens that you can't count. Now, now we, after a long, long walk of faith. Ultimately, they get a promised child, Isaac. How do you think Abraham's faith, how, how do you think Abraham started feeling? It's working now. It's working now. Okay. He believed according to what was spoken and according to what was written. He did not believe according to what he saw. Now, when Isaac is there, Look at the test now. <laughs> Read. So Ab God tested Abraham's faith. What is the test now? God told him to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. How? Ah? Uh, mm. Was that not now our hope? It was. Eh? Mm. So, he is saying to Abraham, you, you need to believe me for what I have said. Not what, because you see some improvement in your hand. Okay? Because this was the improvement, isn't it? Yeah. And God was to take the improvement away. To say, I want you, your faith to be based on what I have promised you. You need to keep on holding to it. Whether things are getting better or not getting better, you know you believe my word. So continue. Abraham obeyed because he had faith. Ha, I like <laughs> this. <laughs> you see faith. So if it were some of you. 
<laughs> you are going to do everything to make sure that Isaac doesn't get sacrificed. Actually, when you had, you had an Ishmael, <laughs> you would have easily suggested to God, <laughs> there is another one here I can give you. <laughs> His name is Ishmael. No, he says, I want that one. The one way now you think that things are getting better. I want to see if your faith is really dependent on me. And now it says, Abraham obeyed God because he had faith. So Abraham was saying, my faith is not based on Isaac or no Isaac. My faith is based on what God has promised. Amen. So repeat that, Abraham. Abraham obeyed because he had faith. Mm -hmm. He already had the promise, promises from God. You see the answer. Abraham obeyed God because he had faith. What did he have? He already had the promises from God. Mm. So if I already know what God has said, I'm sorted. Yeah. Whether my situation is getting better or getting worse, I'm sorted. Mm. Amen? Amen? Because I already have the promise from God. Mm. Mm -hmm. And God had already said to him... <laughs> hey, look at this. I think this one, the ERV excelled here. It's showing you God had already anyway said... <laughs> because the thing is that it means whatever is happening now is immaterial. Mm. Because God has already said something. Mm. God has already promised me something. God had already said to him, It is through Isaac that your descendants will come. So now do you see the trick? Mm. Now God says, Offer Isaac. But God had already said, It is through Isaac that your descendants will come. Now if God says, Offer Isaac, and Isaac is killed, whose problem is it? <laughs> it's God who must solve his problem. So some of you, you, you get into trouble because you try to be God. You try to help God as if God is your younger sister. Okay? God is God. And by the way, that word God means the self-existent one. God has been God before you were born. He will remain God even after you are gone. So, it's not your business to try and help God. You remember the one story I said? I, I like the thing that um, the father of Gideon said. And he was called Jerubal because the other time Gideon destroyed the images of Baal. And the worshippers of Baal came to Gideon's father and said, we want your son, we want to, 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 uh, to discipline him because he has destroyed our God, Baal. And then <laughs> the father of Gideon said, I think you are the ones who must be put to trouble because do you think God can be defended? Don't you think you are bringing a shame to God? You want to fight for God? If Baal is God, let him fight for himself. And I think that's a powerful statement. So for me, my God is God. He fights for himself. He is Jehovah. Giant. He is mighty warrior. Great in battle. Jehovah is your name. That's Exodus 15. When the, the, the Egyptians were chasing the Israelites and they came to the Red Sea and Moses pointed at the Red Sea and the Red Sea parted and the Israelites walked and when they crossed, the Egyptians were coming with their chariots. And all of a sudden, they started feeling their chariots were pulling very hard. And the wheels were almost like getting stuck and getting off. And they started saying to one another, their gods are fighting for them. This, we just can't handle this. But it was too late. Because they were already in the middle. And then Moses pointed back. His uh, uh, stuff. And then the miracle was finished. So if you just ride on other people's miracle not knowing how it has come about. <laughs> so you just hear other people saying things and you just say this, you just copy. Because the miracle was now finished and now you are in the middle. And then they were all swallowed. 
And in Exodus chapter 15, the Bible says, Miriam took a tambourine and she started declaring the goodness of the Lord. She said, Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Our enemies were coming against us, but you swallowed them up. Because you are God, you are mighty. Continue. We need to finish this part. We but Abraham others. was ready to offer his only son. Mm. He did this because he had faith. Ish. He was ready to offer his only son. He did this because he had faith. And it says, actually, Abraham was even saying, God will solve his problem. If, if Isaac can be killed, God will have to raise him from the dead. Because he said it will be through Isaac. So the good thing with being a Christian ch children of God is you are not responsible to make the promise of God come to pass. Your part is only to believe. You only believe what God has said. You are not accountable for things being manifested. It's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is only to believe. You remember in the book of Mark chapter 5 when uh, somebody came from the ruler of the synagogue's house when Jesus was delayed from uh, when Jesus was delayed to go to the house to heal the daughter because he was with the woman with the issue of blood. You remember the story? The Bible says people from his house came and they were saying, don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. It means it's too late. The Bible says when Jesus overheard them, he said to this man, don't be afraid. Only believe. The only thing I need from you is your faith. Hold your faith and I will do the rest. Amen. Can you tell your neighbor, hold your, faith. hold your faith and Jesus will do the rest. Do the rest. Amen. Amen. So it's actually God. He is, he, it's, with God nothing is too hard. That's what Jeremiah says. That we walk by faith and not by sight. I said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We won't read it. I want us to now, as I'm drawing to a close on today's one, we're beginning our descent, but we're not landing yet. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53, because I want to make it even more practical by looking at healing as one of the aspects where you can exercise your faith. Whatever you're trusting God for, but we also want to show you how faith works even when it comes to healing. Okay? Isaiah chapter 3, 53, 1 to 5, King James Version. Mr. MJ, Isaiah 53, 1 to 5, King James Version. Who has believed our report? Okay. Who has believed our report? report. So it's mm. either the promises or the word or the report. Mm. But there is something that's already said. Mm. So when my situation comes, it's coming when God has already said something. You know, even when the devil went to, to tempt Eve, he came, he started asking things when God had already said something. And Eve chose to believe the devil instead of believing the word that he was given by God to say they mustn't eat of that tree. Okay? So even in your own situation, when your situation comes, it's coming after God has already said something about your situation. Do you believe that report? Continue. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So you need the revelation of God's arm in your life. Mm. Like that man who was told, who, uh, the master said, open his eyes, and then he could see. Continue. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. Mm. He is despised and rejected of men, mm. a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. Mm. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. So Isaiah is prophesying about how Jesus would be hanging on the cross. And yet he says he had no form or comeliness that we would desire of him. So it, it was like, yes, he was really, you wouldn't, he was rejected. He was despised. He was put to shame. Everything. But why was that? 
surely he has borne our griefs so it means the grief that he was bearing was not his mm. whose grief was it ours mine mm. continue and carried our sorrows when he was carrying the sorrows whose sorrow was it ours mine mm. so he carried it mm. mm-hmm. yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted yeah but he was wounded for our transgressions whose transgression was he wounded for mine mine mm. uh-huh. he was bruised for our iniquities whose iniquities was he being bruised for mine mine mm. so i should have been on the cross i should mm. have been punished mm. but he took my punishment uh-huh. the chastisement of our peace was upon him mm-hmm. and with his stripes we are healed hey. amen i like that So with his stripes we are healed. So those of you who have watched the passion of Christ how when they were beating him and then some flesh coming out that was so that I mustn't feel the pain of sickness. So he took my pain. He took my sickness and with his stripes I'm healed. 1 Peter 2:24 King James version says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed now simple on the cross jesus did two things he took our sins and he took our sicknesses now for most christians it's very easy to believe that jesus died for their sins but they find it difficult to believe that he took their sins their sicknesses is the same cross okay is the same cross you don't say when you want to believe god when you accept jesus you don't say if it's god's will he, my sins he will he will forgive my sins no you say i believe that my sins are forgiven jesus died for my sins so even when it comes to healing it shouldn't be if it's god's will He will heal me. Now, do you think it will not be his will when Jesus paid for it? Jesus has already paid for it. It will be injustice for you and Jesus to pay for the same thing. If Jesus has paid for it, I'm not going to pay for it. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to pay for it because Jesus has already paid for it. So it means just with the word some of you struggle to say but can i be healed just by speaking the word or just by hands being laid on me pastor you've got to be practical okay the things of god work the way that god said they would work how did god create the light the sun and the moon in the beginning when in the beginning he only said he used this word He just said let there be light and there was light imagine if it was you and i told you the other time that i'm glad that we were not created until day 6 because when god was creating that there would have been a lot of suggestions about how many megawatts of power do we need because otherwise if we don't have enough megawatts it will run it will run out of power along the way We mean all the years many many years without recharging <laughs> will it work but god just says let there be light and there was light Amen. so that's how god create things he just speaks them into being you as a child of god you can create things the same way you speak what god has said and it comes to pass amen, amen. look at this practical one matthew chapter 8 verse 5 to 10 king new king james version then we'll do 13 to 17 then i'll try and get a landing scripture matthew chapter 8 5 to 10 new king james version <coughs> it's frozen okay okay blessed me, at the meek no no matthew chapter 8 verse 5 to 10 new king james let me go for it Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum a centurion came to him pleading with him saying Lord my servant is lying at home paralyzed dreadfully 
tormented. You see this centurion, his servant was paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. When people are tormented, we need to go to Jesus. But if you think, maybe it's God trying to teach, to teach my servant a lesson. Maybe he's teaching him something. Is, is it when he has taken it away? Because it says here, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. Jesus is the healer. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is the healer. He is not the tormentor. Yeah. So when our people are lying at home dreadfully tormented, it's not Jesus. We need to go to Jesus and Jesus says, I'll come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But, <laughs> I like this centurion. It seems like he was attending uh, Jesus the Savior Church.